Hi there. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Tinnitus TV. Today, I am talking with Del Barber, a man who has turned the page, musically speaking. With his upcoming eighth release, Almanac, the Manitoba singer-songwriter and working farmer started with a literally empty notebook, a clean artistic slate, and a more grounded, realistic attitude towards his career. Freed from these self-imposed constraints, he found his love for songwriting rekindled, and you can hear the results in the richly detailed, character-driven songs that populate the excellent Almanac. Before heading back out on tour to road test his new material, Barbara got on the Zoom from his rural digs to chat about carrion birds, F-bombs, superfluous white dudes, and plenty more. Enjoy. How are you, Daryl? I'm pretty good, Del Barber. How are you today? Good, man. Just trying to block a little bit more of that sunlight, but it's not really going to work. That's all right. It makes you look like you're you're uh, encased in a heavenly glow. <laughs> well, we know that is not true. <laughs> wow, come on. You're living up there in God's country in Parkland. I do. I do feel pretty lucky about that. Yeah, it's pretty good up here. Are we ever going to get spring? No, it's was 25 below here this morning. Like, what is going on? Yeah, it's about the same here. So I don't know, man. That's but you you were born in you were born in the city, right? Yeah, you betcha. South end of town. Yep. Yeah. So so Northern. how did you how did you end up uh, out there? Um, always be, was my dream to live here pretty well. My my grandfather had a place in the Ducks. Mm. And so I spent all my summers up here and then I met a gal from Inglis and uh, there you go. Her convinced her to move back. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, do you, is it, is it, uh, is it like an actual, do you farm or? or yeah. A... Yeah. We, uh, I farm with her parents when I'm home, they have a massive farm, like as, as much work as you could possibly imagine. There's cows and grain land and it's a mixed farm. And then we also have our own little farm here. We do chickens and, and um, my partner is doing like cut flower business on the side a little bit and uh, just keep horses and stuff like that. It's pretty, pretty small time here. But um, when I'm home for any length of time, I'm on the farm at, with her folks. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And, 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 and let's, let's segue right into the, into the, uh, into the topical stuff here. Does a farmer's almanac really come in handy? Uh. I don't know. I don't know if it actually does. I, I suspect it does. Um, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that I think most records, most musicians make statements. They are sort of almanacs. They're, they're attempts to sort of make soft predictions without having any great consequence of if, if you're wrong or not. And like almanacs, farmer's almanacs are like that. Um, there's like a, a possibility that that we can't help but try and figure out what's going to happen next. And uh, that's sort of what I'm trying to get at with this. And like, I think most of the time, my records do act as almanacs, at least for me or my community. And, uh, and we're not always right, you know, but there's just this, oh, there's this, this overarching, overarching compulsion to, to, to try and figure out what might happen next with, you know, within yourself or in, in the greater context of society. Um, and I think the best way to do that for me is by trying to tell stories about it. Oh, fair enough. That makes, that makes good sense. Where, I mean, so I, where, where are you? You were in Winnipeg, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Have you, were you born and raised there? Oh yeah. No way. What neighborhood did you grow up in? Uh, I'm a North end boy. Nice. That's great. Uh-huh. So I think I saw you quoted uh, in some of the press stuff as as saying that you sort of saw this album as something of a new beginning and and kind of approaching songwriting in a way that you hadn't before. Can you elaborate a little bit uh, on how that that came about? Uh, yeah, I don't know if my approach. I wish my approach could change. Like I don't. I w I guess I'm hoping that it changed. I'm a little nervous that like. I can't help but just write songs the way I write songs, you know, but, um, but I did, I do feel like it was a bit of a clean slate. Uh, the record I put up before this was called Stray Dogs and it was, um, the B-sides and leftovers. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. It was sort of just like songs that I had kicking around and songs that I needed to finish. And 
Um, so I, I felt like I didn't have any of those like lingering pulling song ideas. And, and most of my records come from those just, you know, curating all the songs that, that and all the ideas that I had been kicking around. But I like, I went through every notebook and every possible voice note and demo I had ever made and sort of just officially killed a bunch of ideas that needed to be killed and then brought back to life a bunch that, that I thought were, were worthy. And then that sort of led me to not having anything, not having notebooks to look at. And that must have been, I would think, simultaneously freeing and terrifying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was. It was. It was both. I think absolutely. Uh, I mean, without without any grave consequence, like they're just songs. Sure. Um, and I I don't really have the assumption that that I have a career or a a, a place uh for people unless they're any good and and so like i guess if i have to do something else i'll do it but we all sort of most of us artists i mean we just yourself included i'm sure you just do this because you're compelled to do it come what may you know and i did get that feeling i was like i'm not i just get to write songs and i don't really have to worry about where they're gonna go who's gonna listen to them uh if there's even a stage for me to play on, I didn't have any of those assumptions, you know, going into this. So it was really just like uh, a lot. I don't know. I felt like I was, I remember writing like my first songs that I thought were good when I was, I don't know, I was probably 25 when I wrote like the first one that I was like, maybe there's something here. And um, I kind of had that feeling again where I was like, just doing it because I was compelled to do it instead of, because I've had to in the back of my mind. Um, and I think a lot of that, like through the, through my thirties, I was doing it, um, you know, because I loved it, but also I felt like some weird sense of pressure that I had to follow something up with something better or make a different statement or continue down this path. And, and I guess now I feel like, I don't know if I care uh, how far it goes. And I just sort of let go of that idea that I needed to, to worry about whether or not this was going to be, I was going to do this for the rest of my life. And, uh, and despite that, I still wrote a bunch of songs that I thought were really good. And so I ended up in a place where I sort of rekindled my love for the actual craft of it. And uh, yeah, I guess that's why I'm talking to you now. I hope so. Uh, but I mean, to me, that's sort of not altogether totally new for you. I kind of have always got the sense that you've been, you've had a, a tough relationship sort of between the art of what you do and, and the commerce that, that, that kind of has to go hand in hand with it. You've always seemed kind of uncomfortable with it. You know, yeah, well, I don't know. Maybe it's because I haven't been that successful. You know, maybe, maybe that's part of it. Maybe it's just, it's not sour grapes. I don't feel any sourness towards the industry, but I do feel like it is a bit of a fool's game right now. Uh, and I, I feel a little like I don't, yeah, I do feel foolish for going and booking 35 shows and taking a band out on the road uh, across Canada. There's something foolish about it that, that I love. And, uh, and the business side, like the playing side, I think it's just, it's my favorite thing, playing and writing songs. And, and then the business side is something most of us just struggle with. I mean, how can you, it's a completely different mentality and it's just one that I'm not good at and I just continue to fail at, uh, you know, and, and, and that's okay. I don't know. I, I've, I've resigned to the, to the fact that I'm just not going to be, well, not going to be willing to just develop those those muscles <laughs> okay i mean you know you you got to do it your own way and that's i think more important than than being somebody you're not and and you know talking about i mean you're gonna you're gonna be 40 i remember uh talking to john sampson years ago oh, and, yeah. and he was saying you know the thing is when you're when you're in your 20s and you're writing songs this is all a a romantic uh, adventure yeah. going out on the road with your band and all that. When you, you know, when you're a 40, when you're in your 40s or older, it becomes kind of a weird, disconnected, uh, almost trivial, silly job, you know, when all of your, all of your friends have absolutely you know, careers and families and kids and you're still sitting in your, in your 
little basement room or wherever, you know, making up little songs and 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 getting in your car and traveling around playing them. It's a weird life. Yeah, it is. And I think there is there is this uh paradox between it being trivial because I think he's right. I think you're right that on one hand it feels really silly. Um just to leave my kids and and partner and <laughs> and and drive across the country and and uh without any promise of making any money or anything you know like if there's a chance we will but there's a chance i'll lose a bunch of money and uh um and then and then to do it on the back it's not like i'm i'm going and selling a cure for cancer or a, or some great uh new no. product they're um, finger paintings you made that you're going hey look at my finger. yeah exactly yeah <laughs> exactly it's like i do feel like a very very similar uh to my daughter who brings home art from daycare and and is proud of it and wants to show everybody it and and but now i'm taking it a step further and i'm asking people to buy tickets so that they can see it and uh and i think it's really ridiculous uh and, but i am one of those people that buys tickets to see those finger paintings as well and, and so that's the paradox is like there is moments where this does mean a lot to some people and not just myself. And I think if I didn't get that feedback from people, if I didn't get that, that, that affirmation, uh, I don't know if I would do it. I don't think I would do it just as an exercise of ego. I don't think I struggle with ego as much as some, uh, I hope I don't. Clearly not, sir. <laughs> um, well, no, like, you know, you have to have an ego to get on stage and play. There's, sure. you know, you have to believe in yourself enough uh, and, and of course, like, it's also just like peaks and valleys of, of being sort of self-destructive, uh, because you don't believe in it and then forcing yourself to believe in it, especially when the shows aren't going well, you know, and over the last years, like my shows have gone better and better across the country. So I'm pretty hopeful. It's a lot easier to get on stage when you know there's people there and when you, when some of them know the words to your songs. Well, but you're going out to play these songs, right? And uh, a lot of people haven't heard these songs yet, right? Yeah. That's it's a, it's a, it's a bit nerve wracking. Yeah. And in some ways, it's ex what I've always done. Like, I've, I've, this is the first time I've put out a record and played it for the first time uh, before it's been out. Usually, I go out and just play new songs for people and test okay, them so out. Normal stuff yeah. for you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but this the difference is that that I'm sort of testing them out before people have said they're good. So yeah. again, that spirit of like the clean slate. I'm here's what I got, and here's the record, and and so I I sort of decided to dictate what I thought was worth um, paying attention to instead of testing those songs against crowds for two years before I go and record them. You know, so I how mean, do you do that? I mean, obviously, you've got a lot of experience both in writing songs and in playing them for people and seeing what works for you in the first sense and what works for others in the second sense. So how do you take all that and internalize it and then turn it into, you know, the 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 10 or so songs on this album, which are really lovely little, you know, beautifully crafted little stories for the most part? Um, like, how do I how do I choose what's on the record without testing them out? Is that? Yeah, I mean, you know, you're talking about trying to, you know, take yeah. all these lessons of songwriting and performing. And then, you know, when you're writing something and you go, oh, I like this. And then do, are you do you find yourself going, but the, will this work on stage? Will this work? Uh, you know, I guess that's the sort of freeing part of it is that for the most part, most of my career, I've I've, I've just had so much doubt about my songs that I really had to test them out on people hmm. and I wanted to try and like just take a risk and just say this is this is who I am and this is what I'm trying to talk about and will you will you agree will you will you say yes you know whoever whoever the you is uh without me having to sort of carefully make sure that 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 these are going to be songs that people are going to sort of so you're saying you just don't give a shit anymore is that it <laughs> <laughs> kind of, I kind of don't give a shit. At least I give less of a shit than I gave. Uh, and and um, uh, 
I don't know if that means I care more about the songs or not. I don't know. I, I just don't care as much what people think about, about whether or not they're worth it. Cause I think they're worth it. And I think I have enough of a sense of community now in this, in this life that, that I'll know right away if, if people agree or disagree. And, and, uh, and if, and if they don't like them, then I'm kind of done, you know? <laughs> I think I, I don't think you have any worries in that regard. These, I, well, I think. I mean, really I'm happy to worry about lots of lots of those things. Yeah, well, That's exactly. Cool. There's there's plenty of other things to take up your time, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, no, these are these are great little songs. The thing I love about your work is that is that it always has characters in it, and it really reminds me of John Prine in that sense. There's always people in these songs. You know what I mean? They're not, or even when they are philosophical, or even when they have a point beyond that, it's always kind of comes through the eyes of somebody in the song, or the the experiences or the thoughts or whatever yeah um, i'm glad i'm glad somebody somebody recognizes that uh i'm not alone in that uh, do you do you do you uh i mean i've always wondered um do you ever think of maybe wanting to uh, write something in a longer form like use those characters you know throughout several songs or have them come back or you know yeah i think it's a great idea and, and it's something i've been pursuing uh i just haven't been able to do it in a way that it's good yet um so yeah i'm i'm trying to figure out a way to 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 change the way i i write uh to make things you know like i love the analogy for me is like the um the state of television right now and and compared to movies and how mm. much more time characters get to develop on on good tv shows with good writers and, and i think songs could do that too yeah. you know because songs i think right now are sort of movies for me like i i get in and out uh, i want to make a statement about the world through characters and so i'll try to do that even when i'm writing from my own perspective uh, i i don't necessarily assume it's me you know uh, there's a few on this record where i gave myself the the the, yeah where you the, pop in yeah where i pop in and i try to do that on every record i did this a little more directly on this record more like stream of consciousness dylan but i but i don't tend to write that way or think that my best writing is that um yeah i would love to see it to to figure out a way to 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 to, uh, to hang out with these characters more i think that's a great idea and uh definitely something i'm working on yeah, well, I think I think people would love to to hear it. Um, do you do you read a lot of short stories? Because a lot of these songs, to me, are they're they're like little you know little stories. I'll tell you, I've been struggling with reading for the last year. Uh, I get through, and I don't read short stories. No, I mostly read novels. I mostly read fiction. Okay. Um, but I, but I've just been struggling with getting through books. I I I read three quarters of a book, and then I just lose interest. You know, I don't what happens? Know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I just don't, I don't care enough about the ending. And, uh, uh, and, and so I'm trying to read like just less news and more fiction and to try and solve that problem because I feel like I'm, I'm getting satiated through reading endless articles online. And, and uh, it's, it's, I don't think it's doing any, doing me any favors, especially on the writing front. So I, I am in a bit of a pickle right now. I'm trying to read, poems because at least i can digest them um and i'm reading a lot of like agrarian type poems like i'm really into wendell berry right now and, and things like that but but i i you know I'm, i really hope that i get the fire back for for novels and short stories i think that would be the thing for me uh i know cormac mccarthy is one of my favorite authors and he's got a new one come out and so yeah, maybe well, you can't go wrong yeah maybe that will I haven't bought a copy yet. And uh, I think part of it too is I, my dad and I used to read books together like at the same time. And, and uh, we would always choose a book and send it to the other guy after we were done or, or if it was really good, we would just send him, a we just buy him a copy and, you know, and so I feel like I lost my reading partner in, in a way. And I just like sort of been a little bit bitter towards books ever since that i think that's part of it um but i think it'll all come back you know this is part of the deal um uh geez my question went right out of my head oh i know what oh, i'm gonna ask you I'm sorry. Ta talking about your relationship with your songs um yeah. what, what about a lot of your older stuff now i mean you know how do you feel about it is it tough to connect with the guy who wrote those songs back then or do they do they hold up for you 
Uh, some of them, some of them definitely do. Uh, some of them I find just a joy to play, and I'll play them every night, even if, even if it's like beating a dead horse. I remember, like you know, speaking of John Prine, he's like, "Well, what if somebody hasn't heard it when he when he's talking about Sam Stone or or one of the one of the yeah. big songs, you know, Paradise or something?" And it's like I have that feeling too. I'm like, "Well, if if someone hasn't heard this story and heard this song, then they're not really gonna get me unless unless I present that to them." And I do like I feel like not that I deserve words like a cannon, but you know, like if I if I get to have a, a I don't know. It would be a smaller version of a cannon, a pistol of work. Uh, stupid metaphor, but uh, I yeah. There's some of those old songs I really just have to play, and then other ones I get. I go especially when I go to the east coast of Canada. There's a bunch of people that come to shows that request songs that I just do not remember anymore, and and I really want to play them uh, for them in that moment. And, and, uh, but, but I can't, cause I just, abs I won't remember the entire third verse or something. That must be a surreal feeling to, to forget something that you created. Well, also like, you, you know, like to, to your point, I sort of divorced myself, uh, from parts of who I was back then, you know, in my early twenties, especially the, the guy who like super, would it would write three verse songs that took five and a half minutes to mm. sing uh i just those were examples of me just being a little bit too precious with myself and and words and not actually getting to the point and what i was trying to say and and like that superfluous uh white dude talk too much thing i don't want to be that guy in my songs you know and so i want, I want you that i want that to be the title of your next album superfluous white dude <laughs> yeah exactly just another middle class white dude complaining about their life and love and i'm like that that is not what i want to write about and so many of my early songs had a little bits of that in there and um and some people really want to hear that from me still and uh i don't know if i could do it you know uh you know some people can connect with you know they, they connect with what they connect with and you connect with, exactly. what they connect with. yeah uh, you know but I, I think i saw somewhere you we were talking about wanting to be more uh subtle in your writing and and to me that seems like um hard work because you know there's that old saying of, of when you write something oh i would have written it shorter but i ran out of time you yeah. know, because I love it, that thing. Yeah, yeah, the tough part is really kind of taking out all the, you know, extra stuff and the superfluous uh, white dude stuff and, and getting down to, you know, the essential point. So, I mean, does that mean that in your writing now you're doing a lot more um, rewriting and editing? Or is that something that you kind of do up front where, you know, as you're writing, before you even put it down, you're, you're, pulling out the things and trying to get just to the, the nugget of truth in there. My process. Yeah. I mean, my process is, um, not, I'm, I'm not, this a dirty word to use in art, but like efficiency is everything. Uh, and not, not in terms of how long it takes me, yeah. not, not in terms of my use of time. That's not, I don't really care about time at all. Uh, and in fact, sometimes I really like, writing things slowly over long periods of time and but really being efficient with words and melodies and trying to get there quick um i, I don't want to be too too short um but but i really i really want to take out as much of the of the bullshit as i need to uh and and i think i think i don't know if that just comes with maturing as a writer or if it's just where i'm at um but i i don't i don't want to be redundant especially um and i and i want the stories to to sort of open up in a way that's very very subtle and that people might not they can just hear the songs as a simple story and, and not really have to think too hard about it or they can engage with what's at stake with the characters, their geo from everything from their geography um, to, to the thing they're dealing with. And I want there to be enough teeth on these, in these songs, in these characters that, that people can, can really, you know, 
dig into them on a deeper level. Um, I think there's enough there. And I think I've been really intentional about, it's not about hiding that, but in a way, trying to obscure, you know, soft political statements and stories um, and using sometimes real characters, patronizing them um, positively, hopefully, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes negatively. Um, but I, I am, that's what I'm trying to do is, is patronize uh, people, uh, especially in my songs and trying to talk about what, what the world is and where it's heading through them. Uh, and it's not always clear from a couple few, the few first listens. And I think I learned that from Prine and, and, and other character writers like that. And I really, I really hope that people who need more from songs than just a simple story, like a pop country song, will be able to get it here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I don't, I don't, it doesn't, I don't, it doesn't always work out that way, but that's like my intention is trying to be very direct, but also, but also efficient and, and subtle about, about what I'm trying to say about the world and, and, and you know, trying to, uh, trying to make it seem more like questions than answers, uh, I think is a good way for me to live anyway. And I think that needs to shine through in my in my work if i'm going to keep doing this you know yeah, that's good i like that more questions and answers the other thing i noticed uh and, and I, you know i haven't noticed this from you before so forgive me if i've missed it lots of f-bombs on this album lots of lots of uh, were you always this potty mouth del barber yeah well i always was but I, but I always decided last minute to edit them oh okay I was kind of, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like, I wasn't shocked or anything. I wasn't right. my pearls, but it, it was kind of like, holy shit, Bill just said fuck. Holy shit, just Bill just said fuck again. You know? I just don't, I just didn't, I mean, I, I really want to, to be honest about the idea that, that there's not really a radio station that's playing these songs that cares it's about so that. Why bother? <laughs> and and I think before I had people chirping in my ear to to sort of clean it up and so I would clean it up and and I and I respected those voices like they they had a point and when they were gunning when they had money they were putting into the project to to try to get it on radio um I was like it's still the same thing I can and I did I did make censored versions of these after uh mm -hmm. which was just a matter of changing a word here or there um but in terms of the statement it's like I don't really want to pretend that, that that these words don't come out of my mouth on a daily basis. And, um, you know, all of us songwriters just go on and on about sincerity, uh, these days. It's like, that's the sort of thing to talk about is, is being honest and sincere about your art. And it's like, well, obviously we, what else are we doing here? You know, it seems like a stupid thing to sort of harp on, but, uh, that's who I am and, and that's how they were written. And I was kind of, I had that feeling of really not giving a fuck about it. And if, if people get offended by that and some people have, um, couldn't even put out videos on Facebook because they flagged them. You know, I was like, well, that's the first time I've been flagged. I was like, well, this sucks. Cause I spent a bunch of money to promote those. And, uh, you know, so it's all those things. I'm like, yeah, maybe I should have just cleaned it up. Uh, but it is what it is now, you know. Look at you getting all edgy in your in your in your late thirties here. <laughs> edgy, yeah, <laughs> so edgy. <laughs> so, are you already are you already working on uh, album nine? Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't know what it's gonna be. I'm like just in the infancy stage of it. I I barely have, you know, I have like probably a dozen ideas, um, but. I mean, that's how I start. I just start with an, an idea about like what I want to say or a character and what they're saying already. And, um, but so you're back, you're back to the notebook full of ideas again. I'm yeah. just going to start, I'm just going to start writing. Uh, you know, I, when I, when I'm in my writing phase, I just write for two hours a day and wow. as a practice and, um, sometimes it's like, I'll go out and I'll be like, I'm going to write one song in two hours gonna start start to finish done and it's usually bad but it's like these exercises that help me get the gears moving 
Yeah. Um, and then also helps me tap into like those, those bigger ideas that I have just slowly percolating in, in my notebook, you know, just like trying to circle, you know, like, like ravens on a carcass, you know, like just that's the way I always think of myself. It's just like, there's something is, there's some treasure out there and then usually it's red meat and it's stinking and, and I'm going to like circle it or if maybe it's about to die and, and I'm going <laughs> to circle it until it's dead. And then I'm going to, I mean, that might be the best songwriting analogy I've ever heard this month. Take, <laughs> take as much of it as I can. Uh, but yeah, that, that's the way I think of myself as like a, 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 a corvette or a scavenger or a coyote or something. who's just like, trying to find the the meat that isn't rotten in the carcass and, and uh yeah <laughs> i've never said that metaphor out loud to anybody but that's i think i think you want to write that one down that's a song in itself that's the way <laughs> I think about, that's what i think about what i do all right man well yeah. you do you're doing pretty well at it and you know you're you're not even 40 yet your your best yeah. years as an artist are still ahead of you i think you know i think so too i feel like i am getting better and i am figuring out what what's important uh and and i don't know i'm really excited about the next next chapter come what may you know well good i think that that makes two of us man cool well thanks so much i uh i really appreciate folks like you doing this it's it's a lot of work for you and uh man it really helps us out so yeah. you the, you're the one doing the work i'm 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 the i'm the the carry and feeder in this uh in this particular <laughs> scenario here, buddy. So. Like, well, well, wait, then that makes you carrion. So maybe that's not good either, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's uh, we, uh, off to, uh, are you talking to more people today or are you actually off to do real work now? No, uh, we are actually going to drive. I think we're going to go to the city and see my mom, um, huh? bring the kids, bring her grandkids in to see her. Um, I have an interview tonight with Troubadour Podcast or something. I don't know who they are, but um, yeah, just like doing tons of press and talking to people about this and trying to be present with them and not just regurgitate bullshit. You know, that's the hardest part is that you get these like holding patterns of what you think you're supposed to talk about. Cause you've thought about your record and now, and then, you know, trying to like let that conversation actually go somewhere. Yeah. But it's also the analogy you use with the song, right? When you're playing that song and maybe somebody hasn't heard this, I mean, cause uh, you know, you're kind of starting with this uh, again, blank slate every time and trying to give people the, condensed version of here's who I am and here's what the album's about and here's what's new and here's why you should care and here's why I'm interesting and you know that's a that's a hard job in, a, in and of itself never mind creating but, all the stuff you're trying to sell you know but you know and you've seen bands that that are on autopilot that just play their set oh god yeah, yeah. and they play the set same set every night that's like not really what I want to do and um even if we're playing the same set list of you have to, there's a way to do it and be present and figure out who's there and mm -hmm. push the songs to them. And, and it's the same with like doing interviews. It's like trying to figure out a way to, to be present and not just, just going through the same motions and telling that story. And it's important for me to like get my point across, but it's all, there's also ways to do it um, where you're actually responsive to people instead of just like, you know, trying oh, yeah. to answer A, answer B, answer C, you know, yeah. Talking and I mean, I, I just, point to, yeah. I read, I read so much of this stuff, uh, not the stuff that I do, but, but like the interviews other people do. And, and, uh, and I'm, I'm really curious and I go through their interviews on their press campaign and I'm like, man, it's these same answers. And I'm just like, I don't want to do that. I'm not, I'm smart enough to have a conversation with somebody and, and, and think about this critically. Uh, and I don't, I'm not really too precious about whether or not they think it's good or I think they need to think it's good. I don't, that's not really up to me at this point. Um, yeah. I don't need to like defend it, but um, yeah, I wish more people would like, you know, like yourself would just come in guns blazing and just like cut me down and see what I do. You know, So next time you interview me, you should just like, if there is a next time, you should, you should just like come in with the uppercut and just see what I do. Yeah. All right, I'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, but I can handle it, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing, though. Some of the most interesting interviews I've had with people are, are the ones where they're just lying through their teeth. And you know, they know it and you know it. But it's just like they're just playing. And it's like just the entertainment value of, right. you know, I don't want to just answer the same question the same way 10 times. So they'll just make up audacious lies that are completely, you know, transparently ludicrous. 
but yeah. it becomes something unique and interesting. So there you go. Maybe take that uh, take that approach next time. Uh, yeah, maybe I should just yeah, I'll, I'll I'll come up with something tall for sure. There you go. All right, man. Well, listen, I'll let you get on with your day. Thanks for your time today. Thanks for all the music, and uh, we'll see you somewhere down the road. Obviously. Yeah. Thank you so much. Really all right. Okay. Bye. Bye.